Okay, so 192 can be factored lots of ways. So why did Kieran choose to do it four times 48 as opposed to just any old factor? square root to just the four okay. and get it after eight. Right, because um, one of the things we learned about square roots when we were simplifying them is that if we write a product inside the square root, we can write that as the product of two square roots. And now that they've been separated, square root of four is two, so we call that simpler than the square root of 192. Okay. Um, and we see by contrast, 6 times 32, either one of those, when we separate them into their own square roots, is going to have a nice square root. So, um, because uh, 4 has a perfect square root, or 4 is a Factor 48. Factor 48. How could you factor 48? Factor it into what number? <coughs> six times eight, though. Neither six nor eight. Are a perfect square. We want to factor it so one of the factors is a perfect square. Sixteen and three. Sixteen and three. Good, going for the big square. We could have done well. If sixteen is a factor, obviously four would have to be a factor. So we could have done four times twelve. Four times twelve. But sixteen is even better, right? Pick the biggest square that goes into that number, and we'll simplify it as fast as possible. 2 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, that's 2 times 4 times the square root of 3, that's 8 times the square root of 3, or we can say 8 root 3. Now that's read a lot of times. Any questions about that? Simplifying a square root when it's, you know, separating it into factors, and then separating those factors into their own square root. Simplify this radical expression correctly. Here's this works. Take a look at that and ask yourself in that green circle, why is Vlad's simplification incorrect? Why is it incorrect? Why can we not do that? Gordon? Because the square root of 5 times 7 doesn't equal 5 times the square root of 6. It's true. They're just not equal. That's, that's the part that's, that's incorrect. The square root of 5 times 7 is not 5 times the square root of 7. Can we go further? Can we dive deeper and like uh, prove that, that, is, that they're not equal? So now using what we know about square roots, show that these two could, couldn't possibly be saying that these two are equal, well obviously the square root of 7 part is equal to the square root of 7, 6 is equal to 6. Oh. What, we're making, what we're asserting here then is that 5 must be the same as the square root of 5. See that? Mm -hmm. That makes sense. How could the square root of something just be itself unless you're talking about 0 or 1? Okay, the square root of 5 can't be 5. 5 is the square root of 25. That's one way to think of it. If 
If five were the square root of five, then five times itself would have to be five. Of course, that's not true. Um, lots of different ways to say this is not the same as that. Okay. And we can sit here and I can point at it and you can say, yeah, they're not the same. But I, I picked this mistake because I see it a lot. People just uh, split it into any two factors they choose. Because this one's on the left, they take it outside the square root. And there it is. Took a second to think about what you're writing down, you realize that can't be true. Right. If you think it's true, I would say, hey, go ahead and write that down. If you're writing it down because you just want something to write down, you might as well have not written anything down. Okay. Taking wild guesses like that and just leaving it, I don't know. I never felt good about that. Um, yeah, so it's, it's not about a series of steps, and it's not about uh, getting a square root and then making the square root disappear. But when you take the square root of this number, it should have a perfect square root. This one just doesn't. Okay. So why, pretty simply, 5 is not equal to the square root of 5? Okay. One way to say it. How can Vlad tell that his expression cannot be simplified beyond square root of 35 over 6? Once he gets to this stage right here, it's done. It's done. It's as simplified as possible. And how can he tell that? Well, isn't the square root of 5 times 7 also correct? Sure, but that's just, that's not what we would call simplified. <coughs> it's equivalent. It's not what we would call simplified. This is simplified because we were able to write it as not just the square root of some huge number, but some whole number out here times a smaller square root. A little bit easier to conceptualize how big that number is. We can come here and try to simplify. How can we tell it just can't be simplified? No more. Anyone besides Brian? Have anything? Close. Say again. Neither of which numbers? Um, true with 6 is the result of taking the square root of 36. So that's like simplified. Um, 35 is not a square, but neither is 192. 192 is not a square, but we simplified it by, uh, by this process, by, by factoring it into two factors, one of which is a perfect square. So when we take the square root, we get a nice whole number. And then we did it again. We, took, we uh, factored 48 so that it was 16 times 3, and the square root of 16 is 4, and it should cancel into 3. So now we have this whole number outside the square root and a small number inside the square root. So what's stopping us from doing that to this? Can you fashion them to where you are then? None of its factors are squares. There it is. There's the key. None of its factors are 35. Right? 6 is good. 6 is a nice whole number. The denominator is a nice whole number. We like that. Um, but none of the factors are squares. Of 35 are squares. Well worded. Very well put. Okay. So Rosalind did not solve this equation correctly. Uh, you can see there First, she has maybe divided both sides by negative 1, so now everything's positive. So she takes the square root of both sides. That's what she chose to do to start. If that's what she did, then why is the line after that incorrect? Just write a little quick, quick explanation of why it could be incorrect. If you're going to take the square root. Why would that be incorrect? Now, besides four and four, Chloe, you know, give us a give us that one. Simply because it's a square root of three. Because the square root.
square root of 3. Simple as that. They did square root of 213. They did square root of w squared. But they're not showing what the square root of 3 is. They just said 3. That's kind of the same problem with square root of 5 and 5. They're not the same thing. See it all the time. Someone takes the square root of both sides. Just knowing the, that they want to have just w, not w squared. But then they don't really think about it. They don't give any thought to what's going on when they take the square root of 3 w squared. If you do that, then you would need the, the square root of 3, which then, if, if we realize that, that that's actually the case, now we think, that doesn't look too pretty. I don't really like that. I don't want to deal with the square root of 3. I want to avoid it, right? You spit off a little bit more than you uh, thought you were chewing. So, well, pretty simply, the square root of 3 is not equal to 3. We need to acknowledge we're taking the square root of 3 as well as w squared. Uh, okay, so that's what it looks like to take the square root. So question number two, should Rosalind do something other than take the square root at the point that she takes the square root? Is there something else that you would do? We can answer that by 3. 5 by 3. We divide by 3. Uh, like if we go back to here, we divide by negative 3. Right? And then that's going to be positive, and then, uh, or if we're here, we divide by 3. Either way, what we'll wind up with is w squared equals 213 divided by 3. 71. 71. Not w squared. Now what are we all set up to do at this point? What would be our next step? Take the square root. All we have on the side is w squared. If we want a w, take the square root of w squared. It looks like w. Square root of both sides. w equals plus or minus the square root of 71. We try to simplify that, but 71 is You know how to check if, if a number is divisible by several of the smaller numbers? Like, is it divisible by 2? Like, if 71 is divisible by 2? Mm -hmm. This is a silly question. Is it divisible? We want to find square numbers, right? Is it divisible by 4? Mm -hmm. No, because it would have to be divisible by 2 to be divisible by 4. It doesn't end in an even number, okay? Is it divisible by, um, well, is it divisible by 3? How do we know? What's that little trick? Yes, if you add the digits together, they should be divisible by 3. 7 plus 1 is 8. That's not divisible by 3. If it's not divisible by 3, is it divisible by 9? Mm. No. Um, let's see, so we did 4 and 9. And you know what? That's it. You know how, like, should I go to 16? Should I try that? For 1, it's not. If it's not divisible by 2, it's not going to be divisible by 16. But also, like, how big do you have to go? How big of a number do you have to check to see if it goes into this number if you're trying to factor it? Up to half or not even. That's a good thought, up to half. But it turns out it's even less than that. Up to one quarter. Uh, I don't know how it compares to one quarter. I, uh, I can't even remember. It's actually up to the square root, the value of the square root of the number. If you think about it, if a number had a square root, like, uh, let's pick one, like, 36, kind of a big one, right? It's kind of a big square root. So 36, we check to see if it's divisible by 1, right? Uh, it is divisible by 1, right? It's also divisible by 2 and 3 and, wait, what are we at? 36? Mm -hmm. Is it divisible by 4? Yeah, it's divisible by 4. Uh, but not by 5. It is divisible by 6. Now, look what happens when we get on the other side of 6, the square root. Okay, we're not to half. Half of, of 36 is uh, 18, right? So we're not even close to that. But once we get to 6, what's the factor after that, the, the next biggest factor after 6 that goes into 16? 9? Uh, 9, and what is it? 9 times what? 4. It's got it back here, right? If 4 had gone into it, uh, then 9 would have been the number that was paired along with 4. 
before. So all the numbers after factors after the square root are just going to be paired with these guys here, right? And so if any of the numbers up to six had been factors, we would have already found these other factors, right, as a result. So if none of these went into it up to six, none of, none of the numbers bigger than six are going to go into it either. Does that make sense? If any number bigger than six went into 36, it's, it's partner, and it could have been over here. Okay. What would be like that? All numbers? All numbers. You'll only have to go up to the square root of the number if you're just trying to see if it's divisible by something. If you're, if you're testing to see if it's prime, you only have to go up to the square root. Which includes the numbers, that, numbers that don't have perfect square roots, right? That are decimals. You just have to go up to that decimal. Okay, Dalton's done a nice job here. He's done it correctly. He had a big green check. Um, so first, you can see that Dalton got x plus 2 squared by itself. Why doesn't we just multiply it out? That's my question. That's going to be it. So writing down these little notes in our notes to ourselves. chosen to get x plus 2 by itself, x plus 2 squared by itself. Why doesn't he just take x plus 2 times x plus 2, square that out, and multiply everything together, you know, and then proceed from there? Why doesn't he just do that? Fire away. No. Huh? No. No. That's really tricky. Any, anybody... Which is not insignificant for Gordon to say because if you were to multiply it out, could you use square roots to solve the problem? No. If you were to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2 to get this like, normal looking quadratic that we have been solving, no, you can't use square roots to solve that. All right. So the, if we don't multiply it out, we can use square roots. Isn't using square roots kind of nice? It is if the number is square. Well, even if it's not square, though, even if it's not square, um, especially if it's not square, you can still find a solution. There's no way you're going to find these solutions using factoring like we've been doing. Right? If you were able to do that, you'd have to figure out that like the factors of some number included a square root somewhere along the line. You didn't even consider that. Right? So there's always these nice whole numbers that multiply together. So if we do your square roots, we make problems that were previously unsolvable into solvable problems. Well, they were always solvable, it's just we didn't want to like go into the infinite decimals. <coughs> they were unsolvable using factoring. Isn't there always a number that you can multiply together and add together and make it? Um, uh, I'll say, okay, yes. If there's the technical definition of a number being factorable does not include square roots. Uh, but fair enough. We could have factored it into two factors, two sets of parentheses, if we knew which square roots multiply together with some other constant to make the number we were trying to make, which is pretty tricky. Would take a long time. <laughs> it would absolutely take a long time. Um, OK, so we've taken a problem that was previously essentially functionally unsolvable for most human beings using factoring and now made it easily solvable. We just take the square root of both sides and simplify that square root. And we don't even have to put these together. They're just 
click that number, negative 2, plus the square root of 26 over 2, or minus the square root of 26 over 2. Just leave it like that. That's an answer. It's an acceptable form of an answer. So it doesn't do it. Um, so we can use square root. That's why. If you want to use square root, not only does the direction say use the square root, it's, uh, it either is easier to use square roots, or even if it's a difficult using square root type of problem, you still find a solution we previously wouldn't have found a solution using factoring. Here, he takes the square root, he includes the plus and minus, as he knows he always should, because whether this becomes positive or negative, when you square it, it will always come out positive. So either the positive or negative work. Uh, it subtracts 2 from both sides, includes negative 2 plus this, or negative 2 minus this. Those are the two solutions. And then he finishes this blue, circled blue area, and that step circle is all purple. It's not like purple. Um, how has Dalton rewritten the fraction in this way? How did he get from here to here? What did he do? So he multiplied by the square root of 2 down here and up here. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2, just by definition, the square root of 2 times itself should give you 2. That's what the square root number does. When you multiply by itself, it gives you that number that it's the square root of. Then we get the square root of 13 times the square root of 2. That's just going to simplify it to the square root of 26. It's not going to simplify. And 13 doesn't have any factors that are squares. 2 doesn't have any factors that are squares. 26 doesn't have any factors that are squares. square roots of a quantity is a much easier process than trying to factor that. And not only that, there are so many, let's say there's lots of uh, quadratics that you can factor, there's so many more that you can't, that aren't factorable uh, by normal means. Right? Mm -hmm. the, the factors work out to multiply to that number we want and add up to that number that we want, just like we've been doing before. Uh, sometimes they're impossible to do that way. So. It's, it's easier in, in, uh, in this instance where it is factorable and it makes it possible to find solutions where before it was impossible, functionally impossible. So we're gonna talk more about it in the beginning of next class as well. There are there any questions from the homework before we start on the homework? Important section. Important to ask questions if you have questions. <laughs> By not asking questions, you are complaining. I am an expert. I have no issues. So can I get out my homework before I decide that I have no questions? Uh, I suppose that you could have also decided that. Yeah, I don't remember deciding. Deciding. Okay. Okay.
questions? Any faculty questions? If you haven't, you can pass it out one more, please. And I'm going to get the pen. Pass your homework and just clear the desks, get ready for a quiz. Well, that's just calculated, right? You have calculated, absolutely.